Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Dear students, hope you all are doing well. Welcome to another very exciting session of the course Soft Tissue Characterization and Applications. Today are, we are going to continue from where we left last time on the finite element modeling of soft tissues. So let's dig into ANSYS, uh, the software more and learn a little bit more about the software and how we can use this software effectively to simulate certain soft tissue mechanical properties and their loading criteria, right? So let's get started. Okay, so uh, we are uh, back to where we left last time uh, in previous class. We have just resumed our model in ANSYS from uh, the model name which was saved as SWAM1, right? And uh, that was, it was somewhere here, right? So anyhow, so I had basically resumed it from there and that got me back to that model which was already simulated. We had learnt about uh, several basic steps such as how to do a bottoms up approach based modeling where we start with key points. Then we convert those key points into lines by connecting them with the lines. And then lines, a group of lines are changed into areas. And finally, a set of closed areas are converted into volumes, right? This is how we had modeled the system. And I'm going to take you through all the steps one more time as a refresher, right? So let us uh, do this exercise a few times, then we'll have a very good hands-on on how to operate the software, right? So if you remember, uh, we are majorly working with the uh, menu system and the options there in the main menu. So we started with the preferences. We had set it to structural. So that uh, got us uh, very clean from all the other options which are available in ANSYS such as which are relating to magnetic, electric and other things which are not relevant, right? We are focused on solving the structural so solution, right? Then the next thing was preprocessor. Under preprocessor, we have majority of the um, options. So the first option here was the element type. So we had clicked on element type, add, hit, delete. And based on that, we uh, had the option of adding an element type and we had specifically selected the solid 186. The solid 186 element type was selected because this is good for typically working with volume simulations, right? Okay, so once we did this, I'm going to close out of here. Uh, the next thing which was of interest was the material properties. So we had gone to the material models under material properties and uh, we clicked here on the material model number and went under structural linear elastic isotropic, right? So if I just click this, I would see automatically there is a material property which has been assigned from our previous simulation. What was the EX? EX was the modulus of elasticity, which is typically the slope of any stress strain curve of any particular material. In this particular case, it's a soft tissue. Uh, soft tissue, as we know, are highly nonlinear, so their curves keep on changing. Uh, you know, like for a very specific small regime, you can consider the modulus of elasticity, but not for the entire soft tissue, tissue description for the entire loading regime, right? So uh, having said that, we uh, went for a simple linear isotropic material property with an elastic modulus of uh, 10,000 megapascals. So I had also spoken about the units. So ANSYS is a unitless system and we by default consider all the edge lengths and whatever dimensions you are looking at in millimeters and all the pressures and stresses uh, are to be seen in megapascals, right? So typically force upon area is pascal, that's the pressure or stress 
modulus also has the same unit so we are looking at megapascals in general <clears throat> the next thing is prxy which is the poisson's ratio uh, mathematically given by the uh, ratio of uh, lateral strain by the longitudinal strain that is uh, meaning when you pull a particular specimen of any material be it a soft tissue or any other material you see a slight contraction at the center right so that contraction effect varies from one material to another if you were to pull a piece of steel versus copper versus a soft polymer or a soft tissue they are going to behave very differently so that is what the prxy signifies right is the poisson's ratio poisson's ratios can typically have values between 0 to 0 0.5 it cannot be 0 0.5 okay so these are some uh, thumb rules which we discussed about in the previous session right so with these values we had already uh, selected them I'm just going to click OK and that is going to make sure these are all retained within the system uh, if I click back here again I'll see them right so I'm going to exit out of this material models tab right next uh, I go back to the modeling tab where we have used all these uh, different steps to look at the key point uh, lines areas and volumes we if you want to look at it again you have a set of options on the top list will basically list the key points list the lines list the areas and volumes and plot will basically plot them so let us just quickly revisit them so if you uh, look at the key point listing you're looking at eight key points right that is what we uh, created in order to make this model next is if you listed the lines you will see a range of lines right 12 lines which were created by connecting different points similar with areas bunch of areas right if you just pull this they'll align themselves six areas were created using this set of lines right one two three and four were used to create the area number one and so forth right then uh, if you look at the volumes you have just one volume one volume which is encompassing uh, the different uh, encompassed with the different areas such as the one two three four five and six so all these areas together are forming this one right so uh, one thing to note here is uh, we cannot be working with our model just with key points lines or areas where uh, we can uh, work with them separately but not with this type of element right and typically what we are going to focus on this uh, in this course is uh, on the volumes right so we need to create a volume somehow or, or the other like either through uh, you would say a bottoms up approach or there are options of creating a volume directly some of those I am going to show you in today's session right so once we have created that volume using bottoms up approach the next thing which we did was meshing so one of the primary uh, two of the primary criteria uh, for meshing is one is you need to have some geometry or some initial uh, model which is there which was the volume right and the next part is you need to have a defined material property if any of these things are mis missing you cannot mesh a model right of course without the geometry what will you be meshing and without the material property you cannot mesh the third thing is you should have selected an element type without this element type again the meshing operation cannot be considered right so with this three things you were able to mesh and uh, meshing basically what it does is it breaks down the entire model or the entire geometry into small small elements and then lots of mathematical equations which are equations of the mechanics of material are applied on the background on these small small elements and based on that the overall results are calculated for the entire volume which has been meshed right so uh, this is your mesh if you want to look at the plot key points these are the key points you can go to plot controls numbering and set the key point numbers on that should typically show you the key points right the reason you're not seeing them is because of an operation which we uh, considered right so we have selected the material numbers here by mistake right you should set this to no numbering otherwise this is going to supersede whatever you select here so when i set to no numbering now the key point numbers should typically follow always have the dynamic model mode on in order to quickly uh, roam around with your model whether you want to 
zoom in zoom out pan them this is pan left click hold and move and then right click hold and move will rotate the model right so let's see why the key point numbers are not shown because the numbering is shown with colors only so colors and numbers now the key point numbers will all show you are seeing all the model numbers from 1 to 8 right okay so the next thing which we did was we created lines the lines did not look like this they looked like straight lines without any uh, voids the reason they are looking like this is because of the meshing right so once you do the meshing the lines kind of look like this just to indicate that a mesh has been applied to the model right so all these basic concepts have to be learned before we can dive into a real uh, problem of solving some soft tissue analysis or whatnot right we are just recapping everything which we have learned so far the next thing is if we just plot areas we will be able to see all the areas right and the last part is if we just plot volumes we will be able to see the volumes which in this case is just one volume right all right so the next thing is uh, we have the volumes now let us plot elements this will plot the elements if you were to plot nodes it will plot all the nodes these were all the nodes which are created during the meshing process so all the elements have 20 nodes up to 20 nodes which are there in order to describe this entire model and discretize or break it down to small small elements right so these are the nodes how many nodes are we looking at so you go to list nodes and okay so these are the number of nodes you're looking at 408 so quite a few nodes right so these are the nodes what is the benefit of looking at the nodes uh, so many a times you would want to apply the loading or the boundary conditions at certain nodes rather than key points right so we are going to get into the loading uh, next right in detail so once you have meshed the model right i'm just going to exit out of this never mind so once you have uh, maybe yeah this this is going to hide a little bit on this side a little bit so uh, the next is plot elements again so i'm looking at the uh, elements the next part which we did was we applied some loadings uh, so we had loads and we had defined certain loads from what i remember we applied one constraint and uh, one pressure so uh, what i'm going to do now is uh, let's say i've forgotten what the loads i've applied or i want to apply a new set of loads to this model which has been developed which has been meshed now i want to change the load so what is the minimal thing which i need to change the first thing to uh, to be considered is to delete all the previous loads this is a very important thing to be noted down right so let us go to delete under uh, loading option we have the option of define loads and under define loads we also have the option of delete and apply right apply is what you use for applying the loads and delete for deleting the loads right so i'm going to delete all structural displacement on areas because most likely i applied displacement on a certain area this would be most likely this area so i'm going to pick all that will make sure none of the areas which which could have been constrained are all vanishing and those constraints are removed right so this is done and as uh, expected this is where i had applied the displacement constraint so uh, one thing i had explained very clearly was uh, to run simulation with any model on ansys there is a minimum criteria which needs to be followed that is you at least need to have one constraint one displacement constraint so that the model is not moving around in the space because the computer doesn't know where the model is supposed to go so you need to fix the model at least on one area or at least at on a few points you know like it cannot be one point because then it is bound to rotate and other do other things it could translate in other directions and things like that right so it has to be at least an area or a few points and uh, you basically fix this model here that is the minimum criteria needed for any simulation the next criteria is of course you need some loads but even if you don't have the loads your simulation will still run fine it will not give any relevant results but the result simulations will run 
but if you have not fixed a constraint or put a constraint and applied loads the simulation will not run so constraint is a very must right so i'm re i've removed the constraint so this model should not run i believe right the next part is i have to remove the other loads so structural that was not a displacement load from what i remember it was a pressure load on areas so I'm again going to pick all and uh, just hit OK so this was the area which was displaced the black located one on the very right right so I had a, now I have removed all the constraints and loads from the system the next thing which I'm going to do is apply new loads and boundary conditions to the system so constraint uh, is very similar term which is used analogous to the term boundary condition right and loadings are typically the forces pressures and other things which you want to apply throughout your system right so let us apply a new set of loads uh, earlier i had applied loads to the geometry so this is another important thing to consider can you apply load to the mesh or do you have to apply load to the geometry Two, are, two things are very different. One is the geometrical model which you have modeled and second is the mesh which you cannot control. You have applied meshing and there is some mesh which is formed. So where are you applying the loads? Right? Is it on the mesh or is it on the model? So, so far what we have done uh, in this uh, previous set of simulation was we have applied the loads and constraints on the model, on the geometrical model. We have neglected the mesh and automatically the loads were transferred from the model to the mesh and computer has done its job of finding the solution right but you also have the option of applying loads and constraints to elements and nodes right so let us learn a little bit about uh, what all are the kinds of loads which you can apply and uh, what are what are your options right so let us take a look so I am going to first of all apply a displacement constraint now rather than in uh, the complete area on certain lines right. So I am going to apply a displacement constraint on this line and I am going to apply a displacement constraint on let us say this line okay. All degrees of freedom done. So these are constraint. Now I am going to apply a displacement constraint on few points right on key points so these key points are already fixed by the virtue of the line right so they do not have to be fixed twice but let's say i want to fix this key point which is key point number 2 and the other key point which is on the other side which is key point number 6 so i want to fix these folks as well in all degrees of freedom all degrees of freedom means it cannot translate or rotate along the along any of the planes not rotate along any of the planes and not translate in x y and z directions right so the constraints are applied right can i also apply a constraint on nodes yes i can apply a constraint on nodes also so let me apply a constraint on nodes but which node i don't know right because there are a lot of nodes let's say i want to apply a constraint on a bunch of nodes right so I've just constrained the two lines here. So let's say I want to apply a constraint on some nodes here, right? So I can always have selected something wrongly. I, I can reset this. I can cancel out of this and rotate this model to uh, have it visually in a certain direction. Let's say what I want to do here now is I want to constrain a set of nodes over here, okay? So how do I do that? I can use the box operation or I can use the circle operation. I'm going to use the circle operation. So circle operation goes like this, right? So let's say this, this is the number of nodes I'm going to constrain, okay? In all degrees of freedom, done. So all the constraints are there. Why are they not showing? Because I don't have a few things turned on, right? So there is an option under plot controls which is known as symbols. So under symbols typically you have a range of things which are applied here, right? So surface symbols, a uh, lot of things are probably not visually there, 
yeah now it is here so we are looking at these are some constraints right so the constraints have been properly placed that these are the constraints right the next thing is uh, so uh, one thing to be noted here is we have applied displacement constraints to not only the lines which are part of the geometries but also the nodes which are part of the mesh so two things are very different geometrical model and mesh are very very different geometrical model is what you create and mesh is what the computer generates in order to do the simulation right so we have applied the constraints successfully to both the model and the mesh let's go further we want to apply some loads right so first load which i want to apply is pressure on areas so i'm going to select this area and apply a pressure of oh this is a delete operation my bad so i think we may be in the delete operation that's why things are a little bit here and there okay i think i did something wrong so uh, rather than go to delete i should go to apply right so what i should do is apply structural so i'm going to just delete all the loads one more time so i was in delete operations so uh, i want to delete all the displacements on all key points right recall done right on all lines right recall done on all areas uh, all nodes sorry right recall so they are not there so i want to apply now right let me just get rid of this in the plot symbols in color Set back to this. Yeah, plot. Yes, plot. Yeah, I think something is switched on. That's why you're seeing uh, these. Maybe we can have the this set to none. That should suffice. Yeah. So this uh, worked out. Like you, you can use the symbols tab to play around with a few options. So now I'm rather than going for delete, which I did by mistake, I'm going to go for apply and go to these displacements. So let me apply the displacements on the two lines which I proposed. So yeah, these mistakes are very common, right? Like many a times we'll overlook them. We may be deleting things and we are not applying, right? So this is something to be considered. So one of the things which I'm going to do uh, while we learn about ANSYS is I'm going to make some mistakes, uh, few of them deliberately and kind of go back from there just to show you what all are the things which can go wrong and how to fix those, right? So that is also part of our learning. So let's go back. So we have successfully applied the constraints to both the lines. So let us apply constraints to uh, the area on the top. Oops. This is the area. All degrees of freedom. Right. So I have constrained two lines. I have constrained an area. Now I want to constrain a few nodes. Right. The way I want to do that was rotate this model a little bit. These are some symbols which are showing up. Just we can just ignore them for now. So I'm going to apply by placing like this. Yeah. Displacement on nodes by creating a circle. Yeah. So let's apply to these. Oops. Right. All degrees of freedom zero. Done. So it gives you a warning saying that both solid model and finite element model boundary conditions have been applied to this model. As solid loads are transferred to the nodes or elements, they can overwrite directly applied loads. So what this is saying is whatever you apply to the model, it is going to overwrite and incorporate or integrate with all the loads which may be conflicting within the mesh. So a very easy way to put this is go for either the mesh loading or either the model loading. In case you are doing both, 
there can be some overriding and you may not get a solution what you expect right so that's that's the long story short mm -hmm. so anyways we have been able to apply all the different loads uh, right uh, here through the nodes as well as on the lines so we have applied loading applied displacement loads or the constraints to uh, both the model and the mesh now let us apply some forces and pressures so I want to apply some pressure on areas on this area I want to apply a pressure of let's say 0 0.5 by the way, uh, if you are applying a 0 0.5 positive pressure, it is going to push the model in. For it to be pulled out, you need a negative pressure, right? So let us apply a negative pressure. Okay. So this is another loading I have applied. Uh, the next loading which I am going to apply is on some with some forces, right? Like rather than pressure, I want to apply some forces. So let us apply a few forces. Forces can be applied only at points right pressure is a area quantity it's a scalar quantity forces are vector quantities so they can only be applied to certain points and they could be either key points or nodes so let us apply to some key points i'm going to apply in this and this a force of how much along the direction of x so x is along the this direction right along the direction of x i'm going to apply a force of 0 0.7 maybe or maybe 1 Newton yeah so this will show two normals coming out right then let's say I want to apply some more forces on uh, not key points but nodes I can apply in some nodes here depending on what is the requirement uh, Fy force of 2 Newtons So why am I putting so many different loads and boundary conditions? This is just to show you what all things can you apply and what all your options are. How are these relevant? These are extremely relevant based on the kind of soft tissue uh, you are trying to model within the human body or somewhere else. Soft tissues are going to have interactions with adjacent organs at very particular locations where loading might be localized to a certain zone right how do you get this localized zone that you cannot do using key points you would usually have a mesh or something which has been generated through an imaging software or through image segmentation you can only have the option of selecting certain nodes there how do you select certain nodes only and not the rest so those are the things which i wanted to show while taking this example that what all are your options so you can apply the force loads you can apply uh, some form of like you know uh, pressure loads in uh, particular areas not to the nodes right nodes can only be applied with pressure uh, force loads right forces in different directions x y and z right so now we have been able to apply forces to nodes and forces to the model key points right so we have seen quite a bit of loads and constraints so let's see how the model will behave so the last thing which we need to do is before we can run the solution. So what is the new thing we have done in this simulation? We have changed the material. Uh, we have not changed the material property. We have just changed the loading. Let's say I want to also change the material property. So all I have to do is go for material models. Here rather than 10,000, let me put this as 1,000. Okay, done. So the material properties are fixed now. So you can go back and change the material property anytime. All you have to do is rerun the simulation. Before you rerun the simulation, one step is a must. Go to analysis type, new analysis and static. Okay. Unless and until you do this, it is going to not refresh from the previous simulation loadings and constraints and other activities which you have performed. Right. So this is very important. So once you run the new solution, uh, new analysis type, you run the solution, takes a few seconds, right? Solution is done. This is what is shown. You exit out of this. The next thing is we go to general post processing. We go to plot results, deform shape. This is what we did last time, right? 
So the model has been deformed in a very strange way and that is because of the strange loadings and boundary conditions which we have applied, right? If you want to animate this, you can go to plot controls, animate, deform shape. You can go to deform shape only, deform plus undeformed and deformed and undeformed edge. I usually like the third. So if you just increase the pace of the simulation, this is the delay. I've reduced the delay, that means it's going to move fast, right? So this is how the simulation would look like. But this doesn't really depict what is going on inside, right? So I want to look at result viewer and uh, look at the stress. Initial thing I may look at is the degrees of uh, displacement vector sum. So this is the amount of kind of displacement which is offered due to the strange types of loading which I have applied. DMX is the maximum displacement what you are looking at same as what you are seeing by the color bar going from 0 to 0 0.001741 that is the maximum displacement. Units are millimeters. SMX is the solution max which is the same as displacement here. So that is why you are seeing the same value. You can change this to stress. One miss stress is what we typically look at. So quite a bit of interesting stress distribution, right? Here of course the DMX stays the same which is the maximum displacement. SMX and SMN have been introduced. SMX is the maximum uh, number on your color bar and SMN is the minimum number on your color bar. These are the locations and given here MN give, uh, showing the minimum location and MX showing the maximum location. So these are the locations of the maximum stress value which we are seeing here. So these are the points of concern, right? Wherever you have a large stress concentration, that segment is bound to deform if the stresses go beyond certain limits, which is the basically the limit of the uh, particular material, which is the ultimate tensile stress. If the material, uh, if the stress produced here due to the von Mises stress which we are calculating goes beyond that limit, you have a high chance of fracture or rupture or complete damage, right? So that's what typically this signifies. You can also look at von Mises strain, right? Total mechanical strain von Mises. Usually in a linear elastic kind of model, it's just a multiplier of modulus of elasticity because modulus of elasticity is given by the equation stress upon strain. So strain is basically uh, modulus the stress divided by the modulus of elasticity. So it's it's an order of magnitude different, but the distributions are almost similar, right? And again, you are seeing DMX, SMN, SMS, X, these are the solution minimum and solution maximum, which you're seeing on the color bar, right? So hopefully this is clear. The next thing which you do is you can also run an animation with the deformed results. Uh, here, let us look at the DOF solutions. U sum is the uh, complete vector sum of the uh, final displacements. So this is how the displacements are getting distributed. By the way, one thing to be noted is whatever we are doing in this ANSYS platform right now is all static. Even though it's looking like very, very dynamic as if something is moving, that is not the case. It is showing the just the transition from the initial point to the final point. It is not really getting the stresses this way. Right? This is just a depiction for nicer visualization. Static basically means you are talking about one frame, one frame of instance, time t is equal to 0, t is equal to 1.2, something like that. Right? So we are not looking at the transition. That is for uh, the transitions are usually what you look at in a dynamic simulation software, which is also provided by ANSYS but has a different software package which is known as LSDynam. Right? We are not going to get into all that. Right? So this is a simulation which we just looked at. If you want to look at the stress, yeah. So you can also go for animate, deform results. Just select stress. One misses. Right? So this is how the stresses are developing. Right? What's taking a look?
this will give you very clear insight whenever you're working with soft tissues that what are the locations which are vulnerable to fractures or ruptures or possible progression of any kind of injury right so these kind of things can be easily tackled through this finite element simulation right so we're going to exit out of this a few more things which I wanted to show you was uh, if you were to change the material property again you can always go back and change the material property you will see a very different set of results so let us focus on just one thing very quickly uh, let us just focus on the DMX value here we are looking at 0 0.001741 let let us just remember this value and change the material property and come back to this right 0 0.001741 so let's change the material property we just go here isotropic rather than 1000 let us put this as 2500 right and let us change the uh, prxy to 0.25 something right this is random all i have to do is go to solution go to analysis type making sure this is clicked and go for solve takes less than a few seconds now if I go to general post processing the form shape now what has happened here the DMX has completely changed this is what uh, we can notice 0 0.66 negative e to the power negative 3 so 0 0.66 times 10 raised to power negative 3 so based on the type of material the solutions will of course change which is fairly intuitive but what I wanted to showcase through this quick exercise was you can quickly change the material just hit analysis type and run the solution and this gives you a lot of help working with you know like models soft tissue models where you are trying to optimize a certain value of let's say you want to build a simulant or you want to basically look at the soft tissue properties exactly in a certain location you want to change the material property a little bit like to get certain results you can very quickly do that such quick changes are not possible within an experiment right but this simulation software allows you to do that very very quickly okay so we have learned about the material uh, we want to learn next about the modeling so we want to focus a little bit of time on the modeling aspect and just learn all the different types of key modeling techniques and we also want to learn about some of the boolean operations whenever you have two models interacting right or non interacting then what happens in real life scenarios whenever you're looking at soft tissues they are always interacting with some organs or adjacent soft tissues and whatnot right so you're never uh, usually looking at a soft tissue in silo or by itself unless you're just doing a UTM kind of test which is a different case scenario altogether right you're basically looking at a soft tissue in mix with or in interaction with several other soft tissues so let us uh, learn about all those techniques as we go along right okay so the next thing which we want to focus on is the modeling aspect so let us go back there right i'm going to exit out of material property so uh, i'm going to start a completely fresh screen uh, spend a little bit of time on the modeling techniques so the way you can do that is file clear and start new right and just hit okay it will ask you to just confirm one more time done so this starts a completely new screen for you and everything is fresh you can start your new simulation from here the only constraint is everything has been refreshed now reset to its original so you need to set preferences to structural structural then you want to set the element type do you want to set the element type before you do the modeling it doesn't necessarily have to be but you do have to set the element type and material property have to be selected before you go for meshing so just for modeling it's not needed so we can go straight to the model right so let us create last time what we learned to create was key points lines and areas and volumes uh, through a bottom up approach what if i want to create some volumes directly without using the bottom up approach so here are the options i can create 
a block i can create a cylinder prism sphere cone and torus one thing to notice is these are all symmetrical shapes majority of the soft tissues or organs you will encounter from a day to day life are not symmetrical in shape that's why the bottoms up approach becomes really really useful right and sometimes the bottoms up approach is not needed at all where you may be importing a mesh from an imaging software let's say there is a mesh model which has been created on the brain and you import that into ansys and work with it right so either a bottoms up approach or a mesh model but typically creating the volumes and solving any uh, certain model is not very normal right so that's why i started with the bottoms up approach but let us also learn about how you can create some of the symmetric volumes if they are of use they could be of use in sample development and uh, testing them and what right so let's create a quick sample so we go to volumes under volumes we want to create block block by dimensions okay so i want to specify here that the block coordinates are tracing from which x to which x to which y to which y to which z to which z right so let's say i want to make all the initial ones zero indicating that my model is starting from the origin right origin of the coordinate system along the x direction let us think about a sample specimen of tissue which we are planning on testing this is about let's say 10 cm right so i am going to set this to 100 right so 100 for this because my units are in millimeter then along the y direction let's say my uh, coordinate here sorry along the x i'll have to first of all de determine that which direction is my particular specimen going to be located so for the block it doesn't matter because i could be using the x axis as my direction of utm or something like that so let us stay uh, keep it to this one so x direction is 100 the other direction is let's say 10 which is 1 cm or 10 mm and let's say the thickness of 3 mm right so let me either hit okay or apply and that would do the same so this creates the model which is out of my screen so i'm going to hit the fit view which is going to fit it within the screen right so this is a sample specimen which i have created let's say this is one example right and this was created use without using a bottom up approach now does it have a line point and areas yes it does right so if i list the key points here i do see some key points right if i list the lines here i will see all the lines 12 lines if i list the areas here it does have eight areas so, uh, sorry six areas right if i plot key points it will show me the different key points if i set the plot controls numbering on it will show me the numbers of those key points as well if i plot lines it will show me the entire lines because nothing has been meshed only remember uh, only in case of meshing the lines will be a little bifurcated right lines are shown and the last thing is plot volumes or plot areas all of these things will be shown and just with one click you were able to create this block right the next thing is we uh, do all the same steps basically apply constraint apply uh, fix it somewhere apply some loads but before you do that you need to do the meshing sometimes if you are just applying the loads and constraints to just the model you do not need a meshing right because it's on the model you need meshing only when you want to apply the loads to nodes or elements right but you do need meshing before you run a solution right but for applying loads and boundary conditions you do not need meshing if it is on the model right so this is one modeling technique where quickly a block was created that is what i have shown you so just focus on this dimensions if you want to create newer models and other things uh, with this like under volume you can do the same right so you want to create a cylinder let's say you want to create a uh, hollow cylinder right so it will ask you for the x and y right so and it will create the cylinder along the z so let's say the x and y is 1 1 <clears throat> the internal radius is let's say 0.5 right millimeters 
the external radius is let's say 1.5 right what is the depth depth is let's say 5 right okay so it has created a cylinder which as per the aspect ratio is a little smaller but it has created a cylinder here right so this cylinder was created with at with the center at 1 and 1 right along the xy axis so let us say I want to integrate this cylinder with this particular model then how do I do that and this could be the case in a lot of uh, places right it could be an implant I am trying to interact with a soft tissue it could be a soft tissue soft tissue interaction bone tissue interaction lot of things can happen so what do I do in that cases so so far we have already learnt about the modeling techniques right we have learned bottoms up approach we have learned how to create a volume directly there are other volumes which you can create which will not make too much of sense given the time but you can create a sphere prism is of no not much use for soft tissue applications let us create a quick sphere and uh, then we'll do that so we want to create a let's say hollow sphere uh, like the human bladder stomach and other organs are uh, can be assumed to be like hollow spheres in certain cases where you are running a very very crude simulation but in real scenarios you would take the uh, data and all the information from the image based software and then take an entire model right so let us uh, do the um, x and y let us say 3 3 is where it is centered and radius 1 is let us say 3 and uh, radius or uh, 3 would be too much it will eat away this guy so let us set the radius as 1 and the outside radius is 1.5 right okay so this has created a sphere here right half of that you cannot see because it is hidden by the block right so one thing to notice here is you are seeing a bunch of key points which have been created due to this particular models which I have generated right like a hollow cylinder and a hollow sphere right so what are these key points you are basically looking at some splines which have been created so line is a straight line which is between two points splines are which has more than two points right if you have three points and you try to draw a curve line within that that is a spline so the point in between will give the curvature and the starting and the ending point will tell how the curve is going to look like right so these are all splines right so if i look at the different lines now i am going to look at 40 lines here are all of them just normal lines they are not right they are splines so that's typically what you're looking at right so they have been automatically created if you want to look at plot lines you can see them very directly you will see a very distinct colors for them this purple blue green and red this is by default that this is how ANSYS does it they have certain uh, set of splines demarcated for different geometries right similar with sphere sphere also has so whenever you have a circular geometry every circle is going to be broken down into four splines that is typically the case ok so let us go get back to the volumes now I have three volumes now what do I do next so I have learnt how to create different geometries next is the operate option how can I operate or change a few things with the geometries right so the first thing which happens here is I want to learn about the option extrude right extrude is whenever you are having any surface or any area you want to extrude or extend it in a certain direction and that creates an extruded volume out of it right so let us extrude something let us say I want to extrude this particular surface of the cylinder by another 10 points right so let me hit extrude areas by x y z offset so i'm going to select this surface hit okay what is my x y z offset 
I do not want anything to happen in the x, I do not want anything to happen in the z, I want it to increase along the z direction. By how much? By certain points. By let's say 15 points for example. Done? So it has created now a new volume. So if I list the volumes, you will see four volumes. One, two, three and this is the fourth volume. So if I go to plot controls numbering volume, I will be able to see four different volumes. So due to the extrusion, it has created another volume. But the good part with this is these, this blue and the purple volume, this uh, kind of navy blue and the purple volume are totally connected with each other. Typically, the ANSYS does not consider connection when you develop two different models unless you have connected them through an operation. So, this in, in this particular case, both these volumes are sharing the same common surface. That causes them to be having a proper interaction. Even though they are separate volumes, they are properly interacting. Right? So, I will talk more about the interactions and other things as we go along through this uh, lessons of ANSYS. But let us try a uh, few more options under the operate. So we have looked at extrude. The next part we want to look at is some booleans. Two or three options under the booleans are very, very important. The first option is known as an add. Add is where I want to add all the different volumes which have some levels of interaction. So they are at least touching or overlapping in certain regions to add them in to form a single volume, right? So let me save this model first because I don't have an option of undoing and coming back in ANSYS, remember. So I'm going to save this model and come back here after I do the add option, right? Because add will create a completely new volume. So what do I have right now? I have four different volumes. So let me save this as SWAM2. So this is done. So let me now add all these volumes. Okay. You can only add to volumes when they have at least some overlap. If they are a distant apart from each other, there is a certain distance between them, you cannot add them. Okay. So that is the key criteria. So here if I pick the volume, just one second, this and this, can I add them? Let us try. Yes, I can add them. Right? So now how many volumes am I left with? 1, 3 and 5. Where is volume 2 and 4? They have now been integrated to a new volume which is known as volume 5. Right? So a new volume has been created. Let me add the rest of the volumes. I want to add this sphere with this guy. Can I add that? Yes, I can. single volume created. And the last thing I want to create is this plus this. Done. So how many volumes am I left with? Single volume. So this is a single volume now, right, which has been created. So now let me uh, run these simulations, right. What do I need to do for that? I need to apply first of all select an element type. This is how sometimes you can create certain demarcations of the soft tissue. There may be a tumor on the top of soft tissue. You want to add that tumor to the soft tissue model. That is how add option can be handy. Right? So I am going to select solid 186, close, right? Material property has to be defined, structural, linear, elastic, isotropic. anything to start with. Right? Material defined, element type defined, now I can go for meshing. Yeah, it has created some mesh onto it, right? Which is okay. Right? 
there was a very slight touch between the sphere and the uh, cylinder which has caused the different kinds of addition operation and then finally this is your mesh is this a good quality mesh not really we are going to talk about mesh at length as we go along right so but nevertheless the meshing is done so the last thing which i want to do is apply loads so apply structural displacement loads on areas i want to apply a uh, displacement constraint on this particular surface here which i am not able to select so i'm just going to zoom out so what i'm going to do is zoom out on areas now i am able to select so the bottom surface i've selected i'm going to put this in full constraint then what i'm going to do is i'm going to apply a structural pressure on area right so let's apply a structural pressure on these this area right now let me run the solution solution analysis time new analysis solution solve current ls done not done just yet it's taking a moment done. solution done means everything has been working just fine so I'm going to plot the form shape. This is how the deformation happens. Right? Massive amount of deformation, right? Uh, what is the stress distribution? I want to look at the degrees of freedom solution. This is how the deformation is going on, right? Very badly deformed cylinder. Okay? If I want to look at the stress, this is how it looks like. Last thing I want to look at is the animation. Yeah, this is how this is getting deformed. Right? And the last thing from here is the deformed results. So this is how the stresses are getting generated. Right. So, this is what the addition operation does. It creates an entire single volume out of all the volumes which are interacting and you can run a common simulation on that. Right. does not treat it as different volumes. So, stay tuned uh, for further lectures like on ANSYS. Next, we are going to learn about the other different operations like subtraction and overlap and then get slowly into the different kinds of meshing and all the interaction techniques as we uh, embark in our journey to learn more about how to model soft tissues, right? So stay tuned. Thank you all.